Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. My name is Alastair. And we are back today. As you okay. can see, we are still in lockdown. So keep breaking same one old, month same over. Old. How are you holding oh, up? One John? month over, but then uh still got one more month. Uh, not, 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 not too well, but I am holding. Uh. We are <laughs> holding on very, very tightly. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 glad that I get to wear home clothes every day, so that's 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 a plus. I mean, so what are we talking about today, Mr. Alastair? What are we talking about today? We're talking about something that, um, also something related to art. I realized that we've done like three mm. episodes in a row about art, but I yeah. mean, we don't want to. We're trying not to do too much COVID-related stuff because I'm quite sure you guys are yeah, still yeah. hearing it already. But this is something mm. I think a lot of Singaporeans can probably relate to because this person we're talking about is extremely famous. So we're talking about Tian Hao. So yes. recently, uh, Tian Hao actually. Kind of got on the news. I mean, do you call Mothership as the news? But <laughs> it got. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mothership actually covered this whole uh yes. debacle. So it's basically. There was a mini drama drama thing going on, right? I, I yeah, uh, mini la mini. It wasn't that bad, mm-hmm. but basically, is uh, Chen Hao actually replied to some tweets that are, that were like, um, kind of criticizing him la. So I'm just gonna yeah. pull out my trusty phone. And I'm going to read out the tweets <laughs> just so everyone's yeah, on the yeah, same okay. page. So the tweet that kind of sparked it, I guess, was are Singaporean YouTubers not tired of the same secondary school content from 2013? Them. And Tian Hao, I mean, he didn't just reply that tweet, but like he, he tweeted a few things. I'm just going to summarize a little mm. bit. He basically says yeah. that um, this group of people, they only say Singaporean YouTubers do like types of listicles, but they don't watch mm. anything else that him or other YouTubers upload. Yeah. And then he also said something along the lines of like, uh, it's on YouTube and the way they title it is because of YouTube. If it's on Vimeo, he mm. would have done it differently. But if you want yeah. to judge, he says, but if you want to judge me as a creator, watch my videos first fully rather than the title of my video. There's a reason why we are here today and the reason is not because we do the same thing. So I'll link the mm. Mothership article down below in, in the links if you guys want to find out more. But that's essentially okay. what it is, lah. Yeah. Okay. So I believe this is this is this is a piece of news that is not exactly uh unknown to people, uh, because it, yeah. it it was quite it was quite uh widespread throughout social media, especially mm-hmm. because uh I feel that like there is some there is some truth to what people say, but there is also a uh, a misunderstanding on what uh uh what producing content on social media platforms is like. Yeah. And I mean, uh, right. we both are content producers for a social platform. So like, I yes. think we both kind of know where he's coming from. Okay, but yes. beyond the whole uh, social media thing, personally, are you a fan of Tian Hao's content? Honestly, I would say that I am neither a fan nor a fan because I just don't really consume his his content. Okay. But I get it because like uh, within the realms of social media content creators, right? He is mm-hmm. one of the bigger names, especially on YouTube, lah. That yeah. that like we know, you know, within our I would say circle because I work for the smart local, right? So we mm-hmm. we also produce social media content as yeah. much as we want to talk about about being video, or whatever. Our platform is social media, and then Jian Hao is also on the same platform as us, lah. That's yeah. that's fair. That's our ground zero. But one of the things that I realized that a lot of people uh characterize a lot like. I don't know how to how to put it better, but like each content creator has a very characteristic type of content. Mm-hmm. So this is what I meant by, meant by what I said earlier, right? About that there's some truth. In because the... everybody has sort of their own branding. Yeah. And through that branding, right, a lot of times titling and and copywriting, it ends up looking similar. Yeah, so what do you right? So I would say that the Tian House like content style is essentially very uh, s- secondary school geared so their whole like one of their most popular yeah. series is the whole like class T1, T5 and like the whole journey yeah, yeah. of this group of students la. and I, I would say that it is it is it is very very uh, representative of what uh, their audience is like also because you see right Jian Hao I would say not just Jian Hao all, all social media content producers right yeah. must always be aware of their audience, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And for a big-time con- big content producer like Jian Hao, right, he always has his audience in mind. 
Yes. Right. So having created this type of like what you mentioned, secondary school videos, who will relate to secondary school videos? Secondary school students. <laughs> and and I would say everyone else who has been through secondary school, right? Yeah. yeah. So these are this is this is the main bulk of the audience that he appeals to, ma. So mm. because if this type of content works well for this large or large uh range of audiences, right? Uh there is no disincentive to not try to pr- produce something that appeals to these people again. And that's why a lot of times you see this type of types and demographics video, right, happen a lot more on certain platforms. Like for example, Tian mm-hmm. Hao. Like I that's why I say that there is some truth because that this type of videos, firstly types of whatever people you encounter, right, it's easy to relate because most of the time if you come up with good examples, you have someone in mind that is already uh falling under a certain archetype based on the video. Okay. Right? And if the scenarios are on point, it becomes something that's enjoyable and funny and, and there's a lot of potential for all sorts of emotions that can be evoked within that piece of content. Just because it's relatable and it's like like hinging on a yeah. common denominator of yeah. a large amount yeah, of correct. Singaporeans' lives. Right? Correct. And then the, and then the, the Tian Hao school. format, right, is the types. Yeah. So I would say that the the fact that this person point this out uh, is correct. But I don't think it's accurate that it should be a criticism of his work. Okay. So yeah. do you think it's so you think it's fine that Tian Hao is like relying a lot on like I think it's fine because like okay. after all, as much as uh you produce content that is funny, most of the time this is all part of advertising. Uh he could have put brands in, he could have whatever, whatever, and that's how he's earning so much money, right? And that's yeah. how uh, his media group makes money. Fair enough, a lot of people follow this business model. Yes. And as a result of that, right, a lot of times business and creativity, uh, they are not, uh, one is more qualitative, the other one is more, is a bit less objective. Lah. Mm. One is more qualitative, the other one is more quantitative. Yeah. I will say that, Yeah. okay, personally, if you ask me whether I'm a fan of Zenhao, I'll say no. Because, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've watched his, a few of his videos uh, not really second channel videos but like mainly the first yeah, channel yeah. videos about like yeah. just to because I'm curious like because he has so many subscribers and being on yes. the same platform as him I kind of want to know like what's working for him so I've watched yeah, a few yeah. of his videos Uh, just not for me la. but yeah. I think that um, but I think is that here's the thing his production value is so high that I don't doubt his team is extremely talented yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's still no, because you see, right? You must understand that all these things that you talk about production value or like the yeah. end result, right? These are just visual mediums or art mm. forms, me- art, art mediums to produce to 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 share a message. Yeah. It's just that there is very there are very consistent themes in his message. In fact, in fact, right? Uh, I would say that the criticism on his format is not necessarily fair if you look at the big picture in terms of the entire. Uh, social media sphere in general. Let's talk YouTube. Yeah. Right. So we talk about uh some of the more old school producers like BuzzFeed. Yeah. Right. So BuzzFeed used to produce a very characteristic type of video. The Which moment you see it, you know it's BuzzFeed. The worthy videos. Uh. <laughs> worthy is one of them, right? Eventually, yeah. they branched out into their little different uh segments. Uh. How to say uh channels, right? Yeah. And then now more recent ones, there are things like. Uh, Jubilee and Cut. Yeah, yeah. Right? So much so that actually there's be- there's been criticism whereby they milk the format but the content and everything. Like for example, they say, oh, uh, six 80s and one non 80s, that kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So people start to make memes out of it. Okay. Right? I would say that this is the similar type of criticism that this particular tweet has, has for Tian House content. Yeah. Right? It's just saying that, like, mm. hey, you, 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 are, you, are, you are doing this. But, like, the thing about it is that, like, I feel that the criticism is unfair because people do not understand that there is a reason why he has a certain format. Yeah, it works, lah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it is true. It is true that, that what he mm. said was that, like, you know, we are not doing the same thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But there has to be a branding consistency. And that's why you, you let's say, I give you a, 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 a very. Uh, surface level example, very low level example will be that when you see types kind of video on YouTube, uh-huh. most of the time, you know it is on brand to be Tian House videos. Ah. Mm. And that's the clever thing about it, you see. Uh, but but there's, there's also a fine line. 
Okay. You recognize these types of videos as like a Jian Hao branding, yes? Yeah. But at the same time, there's also the other side of fans where people will be like, oh, you only do the same type of thing. Mm. I like, think... So much so that I don't know, I really if I saw a meme somewhere, damn funny. It's like types of types of Jian Hao videos. What do you say? It's just types, 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 types. It's <laughs> damn funny. It's like a stupid meme. La, but like, but like you cannot deny at the same time, you cannot deny that like it is, it holds somewhat, tr- some, some truth. But it's a very shallow type of truth. You follow where I'm coming from with this. I right? get what I mean. I get what I mean. So you're saying yeah. that his format is just there because we are unfortunately on a platform and we creators are kind of a slave yeah. to the platform. La. All right. So the thing about it and is that he's very, very, very correct in saying that when he because he's on YouTube, he does this. Yeah. If he's on Vimeo, it will be something else. Purely because he knows what the audience is like on each platform. Correct. Right? Yeah. So a uh, YouTube YouTube audience for him especially are people that have proven that if you do types of videos or types of whatever videos that kind of thing, right? People will watch. I and agree. you don't you, and then the thing about it is that you cannot deny the numbers that he's getting for some of the videos that he's that, that he's getting, ma? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like he has so many subscribers. Eh? <laughs> yes, exactly. So the mere fact that mere fact that there are so many people watching, blah blah blah, it means there must be something that he's doing right. Even mm. if, right, to the untrained eye, it looks like it's the same thing. Yes, I agree. But, yeah. okay, do you feel like it's on, the onus is on the creator to um, kind of evolve the art or like his own mm. content? I personally think that, that, that there's a little bit of a, of a tug of war here mm. between, when, especially when you're a social media content producer. A tug of war between uh, running a successful social media business yeah. versus staying true to artistic integrity okay. for your videos and your content. Yeah. Right? So I would say that a very easy Singaporean type of content to produce will be coming up with a topic that every single Singaporean can relate to and then putting, it, putting some kind of meme slash comic twist to it. Everyone will watch. Right? Mm. But the thing about it is that it makes you it, it will sort of like you will sort of um betray the medium a bit because you're just producing what I call what I like to call twentieth twenty first century toilet humor la. People <laughs> no, it really I mean it's true. I don't know of a better way to put it. It's like for example, if people put like like uh I mean the best example is memes right now, to be honest. Okay. Any type of meme you put out, right? A lot of high chance there's a lot of traction because people relate, people laugh. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Correct, and then a lot of times that if you if you use that, you end up making a lot of uh, you gaining a lot gain a lot of traction on social media, right? It's like easy but content la. It is easy content, but what happens is that you lose the what what maybe you lose the direction of what you initially wanted to start with. I don't know if you want to start to, so I don't know, do memes for the rest of your life, but you get where I'm coming from la. If mm. let's say you want to talk about, I want to make videos, and yeah. I want to make nice art videos, make sure everyone can see the, the videography, you can see the... Then, I guess, if your target is to become some kind of cinema, you cannot just wholly do listicles of relatable content. Yeah, because right? it's kind of... So like this is where the tug of war, correct? And this is where the tug of war happens. If you do something that a lot of people watch, right? People want to buy content from you because advertising is all about human eyes, right? Yeah. But yeah. if you want to do something that it's a little bit more art related. It takes a long time for people to appreciate that if it's not popular because if you talk about even like things like music, there's already pop music, indie music, what? Mm. And the largest scene is always pop music, what? Yeah. Right? Unfortunately. It's yeah. like I give you an example, you talk about talk about Singaporean freelance singer freelance singers or even DJs in clubs. Yeah. Right? A lot of times they play popular songs, they play K pop songs because right now that's the bit that's the that's the or, or remix some kind of K-pop song, right? Because yeah. that's what the typical audience will recognize and want to listen to because it's popular. Mm. But yeah. if you talk, if you want to go down to the essence of it as a singer or as a DJ, right? Your objective is to what? Is to be a good singer and to be a good DJ, what? Mm. So you you will want to be able to create music that is like that is music, that is art, that is that is like something that you can sort of like be accountable to yourself to for. It's like more of a fulfilling thing. La, yes. Then what will happen is that you will be pulling the string over to that side. 
Yeah. And high chance most of the time, these people, uh, if they are if they are trying to purely appeal to their own uh arti- artistic pursuit, it's a little bit harder to uh attract the popular audience. Yeah, and unfortunately for people like Tian Hao or like even uh other companies like I guess like Nowell Cinematics or even the Smart Local, mm. like Smart Local, yeah. Uh, all these companies they have to earn money. There are employees. They that do. You have there are there are employees that you have to pay and like they need the money lah. And yeah. sometimes that means you just need to sometimes make a little bit more popular content that's quote unquote not artsy or like not uh very like I would say evolved in the art it, form. It, uh, that that looks like it's the same. Yeah. It's right. Just you yeah, have just to do content. Track, track you have to do. You have to produce things that work as compared to produce things that you enjoy. Or produce things that are uh, purely in the pursuit of fulfillment. Yeah, I and agree. that's the main difference here. And I think this is the this is what is important within this whole discussion, is that people have to recognize that that when when social media producers they produce content that looks similar, right? There is a very specific reason why, and there's only one reason why, and Which that's is because people watch it. Yeah. So like I've I was, I was talking to John before we turn on the cameras, I was saying mm. there are a lot of people who like think that Jian Hao is like kind of ruining the Singapore YouTuber scene or like they think the mm. Singapore YouTuber scene sucks. But I'll say that Jian Hao is just playing the game super well. Yeah. So he, you cannot hit him, you have to hit the game. And unfortunately, Correct. the game is set up by us, by the consumers, by the, by the viewers. Yeah. By the viewers. By so the it's viewers. In, in a very ironic twist of fate, right? The pe- people who are cow paying and saying that like, oh, the Singapore YouTube scene sucks, right? Yeah, yeah, well, unfortunately, the Singapore YouTube viewer scene is the one that's kind of sucky too. It's the viewers lah. Because if one day, right, everyone stopped watching Tian House types of videos, right? I will bet he will change. The problem is he that they has not come. He has 100% changed, right? right? Yeah. And the thing about it is that it's not just Tian Hao. Every single creator in Singapore, if let's say people decide to stop watching, yeah. right, because they demand for something else, right, there is demand for something else, every single content creator will change. Correct. Why? They have to, uh. It's because every single content creator in Singapore is a business. Exactly. And they have right? to, because they have to get the views, they have to be able to get yes. deals and everything. They have to adapt. They have to adapt. It's like, it's like I give you an example, even more extreme, right? if tomorrow suddenly YouTube closes down, Mm-hmm. You think they will die? They no. will not. They will yeah. continue to make content elsewhere, looking similar or or different until they figure out what works, right? Correct. And that's how all different platforms work. And I think this is something that a lot of the general public uh don't realize mm-hmm. that it is actually such a big uh I would say market. Yeah. You know, that there is uh no incentive to ignore the audience. Mm. Right? You get what I mean? Because so as a result of that, right? A, yeah. As a result of that, any any discerning business that wish to operate on these platforms will have to conform to what works on the platform. Right? Yes. Yeah. Either than, other than that, uh, if they don't do that, they have to be revolutionary enough where they, that they change the platform. And which do you think is easier to achieve? Is just be popular, lo. just do what people want to see. Work the platform, right? Yeah. To work the platform is definitely easier than revolutionizing anything. Mm. I think it's and, a two-way street. That, yeah. It's like a yeah. two-way street. Like, uh, mm. The content creators can definitely influence what is being appreciated in the platform. So if let's say yeah. one day, let's say Butterworks, I really like Butterworks. If one day Butterworks yeah. becomes the most popular YouTuber on in Singapore, and everyone starts yes. watching Butterworks, they'll start thinking, oh my god, this is the type of content that Singaporeans should be going for. And one, and then yes. the Singapore YouTube scene will be short films because that's what they do. But yes. there's also the other way around is the consumers affect the creators a lot more than you guys think. A lot. Because a, a lot very people, good example yeah. is K-pop. Mm-hmm. It's K-pop. a very good example. So a lot of international uh, content creators even now on the new social media platform of TikTok, right? A lot of times, these challenges come from K-pop idols, K- K- K-pop songs, and stuff like that. There yeah. is a reason why eh. mm-hmm. It's purely because these are the popular things that you just need to tag on. Eh. Suddenly, it becomes interesting for the new viewer. The, the new piece of content becomes interesting. And if you want to talk about it, this is also another form of producing the same thing. 
Yeah. Right? Mm. Except the difference is instead of talking about types of things, it's producing K-pop attached to a thing. Yeah, I get what I mean. It's, yeah. it's the same format, it's the same formula because it works. Yes. The formula is there for a reason. Correct. But, so um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to, this is the reality of life, <laughs> YouTube folk. Yes. What you watch is going to affect what gets produced. And the mere fact that we have to talk about this is evidence that you watch whatever similar type of content that keeps coming out. Because it yeah. works. And because it, works. Uh, it can get the, type, the correct type of views. And as much as if you are a person that does not like this type of content, you are in a current that you cannot necessarily change. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel that the pointing out, that's why coming back to the earlier point, pointing out that Jian House content is blah, 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 is accurate. But I feel that the criticism is a little bit uh, a little bit shallow because they do not understand that there is a reason. Yeah, I think okay, I don't know about so much about how each video is very different because mm. maybe it's just me. They kind of they have a formula and they stick to it, but I don't blame them. La. I yeah. I think it's just from the consumer standpoint, I would say if you really don't like Tian House videos or like you don't like the Singapore YouTuber scene. There are so many Singaporean YouTubers that are trying their best to change the game. Yeah. Or they're trying their best Correct. to put out different content. Go and support them. Yes. Like go and yeah. share about them. Go and put them on bl- like put them on like the sites or like social media sites and like give them publicity. And once that Correct. becomes popular, then what's and how change. Because right now yeah. like, you guys can hate him all you want, right? But his videos are earning him money. It doesn't matter whatever the hell you say. Because you just exactly. be chilling. At his I believe office. this this comes back to the initial problem, uh, the initial uh, 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 a parallel that we can connect, and it is a very old school for a uh, famous YouTuber called Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's old okay. school, uh, but <laughs> I mean, very famous name Logan Paul, right? Yeah. He's very famous for doing pranks, right? Yeah. For doing, uh, I would say, American toilet humor on social media. Essentially, the if she's the equivalent of Tin Hao in America. Yeah, and and if you think about it, he 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 does exactly the same thing every single video. Yeah, right. Mm. It's like a vlog of him and his gang up to some kind of shenanigans. And then the thing about it is that tons of people view his. It's pointless content, content but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tons of people, people view like it. it. Yeah, right. Mm. And why do you think Logan Paul right keeps doing what he's doing? Until he cannot controversy, but why do you think he keeps doing what he's doing? It's earning him money, man. Right? Why does he need to stop? Not, not, not because it. No, not because <laughs> it makes him money. It's because people don't stop watching. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, go ahead. It's hand the hand same. Hand. And as a result of people not stopping watching, he can earn money from those kind of things. Yeah. Right. Mm. So he can produce the same thing, uh, each looking slightly different, because that is his format already, and his format works. Yeah. Right? Mm. So same. Every single successful YouTuber out there has a specific format. And there is a reason for it. Because the format is what appeals to the audience. Mm. Like as much as yeah. people like think that a variety met- like is important in like a digital creation mm. like a channel, let's say. Yeah. Um, the numbers tell us differently. In fact, when you do things that are very different from what you're known for, more often than not it fails. In yes, which, in it, which is which is extremely unfortunate because personally, as a creator in a media company, yeah, right. Sometimes when I produce experimental things that I deeply believe in, yeah, right. Unfortunately, it's things that my audience does not equally believe you know, does not believe in an equal amount, and it ends up being something that has, in the business sense, okay, very high investment but no reward. Yeah, because you put so much time and you try to be different, but. Yes. But at the same time, like you could have produced two of the same similar format videos that yes. would have done a ton better than the one you just exactly. worked the ass off on. Exactly. Even in my exactly. such a small channel with mine, right? Like, I mean, my most famous segment is HDHD, of course, because we invite yes. people who are very nice and who are also famous. Ah. So yeah, they. Recognizable. <laughs> recognizable, yeah. So HD, my HDHD videos always get the most views. And every time I do something different, like IMO or like I put up a short film or a music video, it yeah. does significantly less, like worse than a HDHD video. 
it's just that's just how it is because people subscribe to me because of HTHT. Yeah. Here comes the the important point already. Lor. So which is important? Which is more important? Mm. Right? Making a successful YouTube video or staying true to what you want to create. And then yeah. to the to the viewers, to the viewers, which is more important, right? Having the small cre- creator become successful or having the popular content always keep rolling. Unfortunately, the answer for the viewers is very clear. Yeah. Right? The mm. popular content is popular for a reason. It's because what people want to watch most is that. Yeah. And can you blame content creators like Jian Hao for trying to milk the market and do the same thing over and over again? As much as I don't like him, I can't blame him. <laughs> you can't blame him. Cannot. It's like how Apple Apple keeps producing a new iPhone that always looks exactly the same and seems to hold not much new function. Why? Because as much as people hate about hate Apple or talk about how it's expensive, yeah. people don't stop buying. Exactly. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Exactly. And and I think I think the first step of understanding this is that understanding that you are part of the game. Yes. You have to play it well. La. And like yeah. for me, a lot of people might say like, hey, but like you're doing, I would say I'm, my channel is doing things that are very weird. In fact, my channel motto is saying telling important stories in a weird way. So mm. I would say most of my videos are pretty weird. They are not the normal Singaporean YouTuber stuff. But, yeah. um, but at the same time, the reason why I can do that is because fortunately for me, this is not my full-time job. <laughs> I'm a student. Yes. I'm a, I, I have parents who support me, thankfully. And I don't, this is not my rice bowl. So yeah. I can afford to do weird things that pleases me and pleases yes. my very, my wonderful friends. But if once this becomes my rice bowl, right, I, I myself can't even say for, for a fact that I won't end up doing just following the popular trend because mm. I probably will. <laughs> because exactly. it has to be that way. So, so you, see, you see, through this conversation, we raise a very, very important point. Right. Yeah. So for independent small YouTubers like you, yeah. right, you are not willing to not do the popular project because why? Humans need to eat. Mm. Right. And the only way we can change this is what? Help them. And not be the creator. Keep hitting the hitting the wall, hoping the the wall comes crumbling down. Right. Yeah. The viewers have to be the one that start the change. Like support them. Put them on social media. If they have a Patreon, support them on Patreon. Yeah. All these are small small things go a long way, lah. And exactly. Like I just want to say, like for even for HTHD, like it wasn't very popular, but like one day suddenly people started commenting and liking it and sharing it. And yes. the Joyce HTHD video. And because of that, like I got a bulk of my subscribers right now from that. So yes. like um I would say continue to do that for other creators. Like if you like their stuff, even if it's a bit weird, just be feel free to share. And I think that's what helps the small creators. Yes. And that's how we change the game. And mm. then how will have to change lah. <laughs> but for now, yeah. you just have to accept that this is the fact of life that it be like that sometimes. Yeah, at any point that you watch, right, you must understand that YouTube does not start from ground zero when you start press when you press that play button, you know. YouTube will will continue based on where it currently is. There was a time whereby whereby uh, uh very early in the YouTube in, in in when YouTube's conception, right? The the popular videos were the crazy prank screaming videos like the people just go around disturb people or like try to do backflip then crash into the Oh yeah. It's really extremely slapstick humor. Yeah. Right? Mm. But that has changed. Yeah. Right? So is it possible for the viewership to mature and eventually want more things? Absolutely. Definitely, yeah. Right? But as long as the viewers still enjoy and the numbers still come in for a certain type of content, there is no incentive for content creators to change because content creators only care about one thing. Views. Okay, especially content creators who are businesses, they care about one thing, right? And they care about and that's 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 viewership. Yeah. And as much as you want to criticize this whole thing, you can't. Because the viewership is what feeds their channel and eventually makes them a business. Right? So you cannot criticize the businessman for running a good business. It's not fair. And I'll right? say that like, um, a lot of people say, okay, but American YouTubers are doing so innovative things and they are like constantly changing it up and like trying to find mm. new ways. But I'll Mm-mm-mm-mm. say, because like, uh, a lot of the content creators overseas, they are in a culture where people will actually actively share and comment and engage with content that they like. 
versus yes. Singaporeans and, they are a little bit more passive in the viewerships. Yeah. So I would Correct. say that's why their their content and their art like changes so much so fast. Because yeah. like they can they they have the support of the culture that will put this um little known secrets up because they say, hey, we should be, you should be getting more views. Everyone like go and follow this person or go subscribe this person yeah. this person because they're great. But Singapore don't have that. La. I would say that because we are culturally very different, which is fine. Every country yeah. has their own culture. And I think people always make mistake make make the wrong assumption that that uh oh you see the US can what we cannot. You must understand that like different countries uh, have different size. Yeah. You know? I'll give you an example. Okay, so like let's say if you get a video with like hundred thousand views in Singapore, right? As compared to a video with a hundred thousand views in like international trending, right? It's not gonna be as significant because the audience base is just significantly larger. Yeah. And that's why like when we when when let's say content producers try to create content for Singaporeans, a good example right now is like the man in question, Tian Hao, right? He has to appeal to as many Singaporeans as possible while ignoring the world. But if he wants to create the content that appeals to the rest of the world, mm. I dare say that you can ignore Singapore. Actually, I think that he's trying very his best to not limit his content to Singapore. Yeah, yeah, no, I I yeah. know. As in like as in like I'm not saying that what, what that, I'm not saying that's what he's doing, but I'm oh, saying okay. that like if depends on what his intention is for a particular type of video. Ah, ah I get what I mean. It's like I give you an example. If let's say you want to do something that appeals to an American audience, right? There are a lot of times whereby if you produce a content that is specifically to appeal to for to American audience, as a Singaporean content creator, you probably will have to give up the Singaporeans. Yeah, because you can't have both, unfortunately. You can't have both purely because different types of contents look different. Different mm. types of cultures look for different things. Yeah. But it's a bit weird that um American content can uh, relate so much to even us or even like like I say K-dramas K-dramas mm. can we can watch K-dramas and genuinely enjoy it but how yeah. many Koreans or Americans watch our dramas or our YouTube channels and genuinely enjoy it yeah exactly so it's very different so you have to yeah. understand that different different like audiences different different cultures call for the content creators to produce different types of things mm. right so as much as as it's easy, right, as a viewer to criticize that, oh, you know, you always make the same thing. There is a reason. It's because the general viewer always watch the same thing also. Yeah. And I will say that by the time most of, I think most of the displeasure is coming from people our age probably, which is like, who are a little bit, maybe a little, a little bit, bit more aware. Ah, uh, more aware, more discerning on the content that you, you like, basically yes. like, like, yes. digest and like, consume lah. I didn't say mm. digest, consume, the content you consume. Yeah. And uh and these people unfortunately are the people that once you hit a certain age and you get to this like discerning discernment, you actually start to yes. look at like other YouTubers who are overseas, like mm. uh, American YouTubers like Cut or like any other or like BuzzFeed even. Depends on what you're depends on what you're looking for, right? So personally, like for example, I'm a good example because I like to I produce content that I try to use to appeal to a Singaporean audience. Mm -hmm. But the content I consume is absolutely not what I normally produce. I would say 90% yeah. of the content that I consume are all either photography-based, video games-based, or TED Talk-based. It's these three things. Yeah. And these three things, right, most of the time, are not Singaporean... Are for not the most part. Are not most Singaporean creators. Yeah, for the most part. I agree. Yeah. It's just different, lah. And yeah. once people give up on like the Singaporean YouTuber scene and they start to go to other YouTubers, then mm. I will say you kind of lost your right to complain about Singapore YouTuber scene because you are not yeah. a viewer. And no, but like at the same American time, world. I understand where people are coming from. So if you feel that a particular content creator is uh, producing something that always looks the same, yeah. right? There are only two things you can do to try to change the situation. One... Right, is to tell the creator what you would like to see more of. That helps a lot because a lot of mm. times, as much as people like to comment in the comment section and type tweets, right? Content, content creators are not mind readers. Mm. Right? They will always appreciate feedback. And yeah. the second thing, which is the more drastic route to take, 
if you don't enjoy a particular type of content, don't watch. <laughs> Just straight up don't watch it. Don't watch. Yeah. Watch something else that you enjoy. Because I realize that people fall into the loop of seeing that like, oh, I just want to watch because uh, uh, something relates to me. And then after a while, if they get tired of it, they don't know what else to do, they continue to watch. And then they complain. What's the point, right? Yeah. If you want to let your content creator, if you, if you like a particular content creator, let them know what else can be done to make, it, make your viewing experience better. And yeah. if they don't, and you really don't enjoy it anymore, don't watch. Because I if you don't watch and then viewership drops, what happens? The content creator will have to come out with something fresh. Right? And that is the eternal struggle of the of the the content creator's role. Is to like you know? read read the room, la, I guess. Yes. To understand what audiences want, mm. right? Without being a pure sellout. And how you can contribute as a viewer is very simple. It's literally type down what you want. Open your mouth and say what you want. Like constructive criticism. Well, they, well, like, like, exactly. Yeah. Op- like things with actionable, something that's actionable. Mm. You know, you tell them what you would like to see. They may or may not do it. But at least that is your step forward to try to change things, to try to like, oh, I want to w- see more of this. Which is great. I right? think it cannot be like hostile. So... Like, yeah, there is no point attacking anyone because you mm. need to understand that like people who produce content, people that watch content, blah, blah, blah. We're all just people trying to survive and also people trying to make interesting things, you know, for people to enjoy. Yeah. And you cannot like, oh, I see the end product I don't like. It's like I eat the cake then too sweet, but you don't want to tell the, don't want to tell the baker that you add too much sugar then? <laughs> or what? Yes, yeah, like, right? oh, this cake is shit, but like how? <laughs> yeah, oh, this cake are very sweet. They're always very sweet. Then, why you oh, always yeah. wait until the cake bake finish ready? Then you say the cake sweet, when okay. you actually in the previous cake can give feedback. Yeah. And right. Yeah. Now there is a difference between uh, if I if I keep saying uh, and then things don't change. Uh, then then that's a that's another problem altogether. I don't know if anyone is is not receptive to to viewer feedback, but yeah, I feel that these are the two important steps you need to do. Yeah, and like even for me. Um, anyone if you leave like anyone anybody who has left a comment before especially those people who have like said like hey I think this could have been done a little bit better or like hey I think uh, yes. you should have done this a little bit better I actually take it to heart and like the next time I do a video I actually try to improve on it yeah like, the, the way the HTHD evolved is also pu- based on like your guys comments ah. like some people say exactly. hey like the audio quality is a bit sway or like hey like there was a middle part where it wasn't because there was a, there's the first part of the HDHD was on the sofa on a bit. Do you remember those like dark times yes. where we didn't have the podcast equipment? And then we got the podcast equipment and it came on the table. And then people were saying, yeah. that, hey, we like kind of lost the chill vibes and we kind of preferred the chill vibes. Then that's when I was like, okay, let's change it back to the sofa. And now it's back mm. where it is. La. And um, without this, I wouldn't have figured that out. Because, I mean, to me, it was fine. But if yes. you guys are able to articulate what you guys want, and able to say in a mature and like constructive way that it actually helps yes. us. I am willing to bet that most people listen to it. Lah. Absolutely. Because in fact, right, the thing about, about the social media community is that it's such a great place. There's yeah. so much uh, uh, sharing that is possible. There's so much uh, easy communication. Mm. You must know that we live in an age whereby a person like Jian Hao who has how many followers? How many subscribers? 4 million? I think it's 4 million which is crazy. <laughs> no, no, a good example is 4 million, right? A yeah. 4 million subscribers mm. has the chance to see a single person's comment that appears on their YouTube comment page, on their video comment page. Yeah. That's how easy it is to communicate. Yeah. You know? You just have a, you used to have a 1 out of 4 millionth chance. Mm. Right? But like now, you can just leave a comment and people will see. Yeah. And if people echo your sentiment and like your comment or comment a little bit more, it's even higher chance for your content producer to see. I agree. Right? Yeah. So there is a reason why these, these resources are there and you are squat and I feel that people who are just let's say co- uh, complaining and then hoping for things to happen right, are squandering all these abilities to, to actually give their constructive feedback to the content producer. Now, if the intention is to just complain and not have anything change, then and you do you, you know, you continue lah. But if you want to have some kind of feedback, you want to complain and hope that something changes, there are, like I mentioned, two ways to do it lah. 
Mm. First is you have to let your producer, the content producer know that, hey, I want to see more of this, this, this. You know, it'll be cool if you did this, 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 this. It's like how you ask your parents for more pocket money, right? You can always ask your content producer to give you more uh, certain things. I agree, I agree. And yeah. I think like, um, Jian Hao, I think a lot of people are a bit unhappy because they feel like Jian Hao is just um, exploiting a demographic that's a bit younger. Like basically his audience is a younger audience. La. It's not, yes. He's not trying to target us. So his, his target is a, this on, the, long, the younger audience which, who are a little bit less discerning and less like uh, able to sieve out good and bad mm. art. So mm-hmm. they feel like Jian Hao is like kind of taking advantage of that young age and okay. like immaturity. Yeah. And that's why they feel like like no point because no matter what they say, he has 4 million subscribers and like I win the bet half of it is probably quite young. I have no opinion on 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 that part of his strategy. La. I feel that mm. uh this this for me, right, it feels like a to each his own kind of thing. Uh whether it's exploitative or not, I I don't think so. I don't think it is la. Yeah. Yeah, because uh as much as uh these people are uh, uh this this age demographic are the viewers, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with appealing to the age demographic. It's just it smart is exactly the same. No, no, because you must understand, right? This yeah. is entertainment, right? So entertainment, it is exactly the same as uh if, if let's say people are saying that, oh, you know, they purposely target these uh, less discerning kids, right? Yeah. Then this argument must be translated to things like theme parks and Disneyland as well. Uh, and nobody ever says that, right? Hmm. Who okay. do you think Disneyland was created for? <laughs> for the kids. <laughs> no. Or for the parents? Tell you, okay. Wait, is it the parents? It's for the parents. It's for the parents. It's for the parents to, 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 like to spend the, the money. <laughs> okay, for the okay, parents okay. to bring the kids to spend the money. That it's not for sense. the parents. It's for the parents' money. So okay. same thing, okay. So as as like content as a content producer, let's say Jian Hao, if let's say you the the demographic has proven through stats or whatever to be a particular age, right? Do you think he is purely just targeting those children? Probably. As a business, probably not, right? Probably not, yeah. There is probably more to it. He has to make money somehow. And yeah. do these children or the or the less discerning younger demographic, do they have money? Probably not. <laughs> they don't Who has money? Us. The <laughs> adults. Like the adult, the adults, adults has money. Yeah. Right? Mm. So in between, he will have this type of contents that is a pe- either a pure advertisement or they will make use of the ad revenue that can be produced from, from YouTube. I don't know what his business uh, model is. La. But yeah. in the broad sense of things, you cannot just name, uh, drop Jian Hao's name. Everyone has to fall in line for this as well, especially when you do advertising. Yeah. Everyone is doing the Disneyland thing, especially when they are talking about producing content that appeals to children or someone that's a little bit younger, mm. right? They get the children to watch so that when they need to advertise to the adults, already got people watching. Yeah. Same for Disneyland. They get the children to come. When they need to charge the money, they don't charge the children, one, right? The children would ask the parents to buy for them. <laughs> they involve... Exactly. It's smart because they yeah. involve the the lesser paying demographic to attract the ones that have the money to come along. It's which is very smart. Because mm. when let's say Jian Hao or local uh, content producers produce something that's a little bit more mature and a little bit more uh, how to say serious in terms of the theme, they already know who is watching. Yeah, It's not their original audience. It's whoever has come along. Mm. Right? Yeah, With their original audience. I get what I mean. And that's fine. You yeah. know? And that is perf- perfectly fine. Mm. Because as a result of what he has done earlier, he is now able to hit multiple demographics. It's smart business. La. <laughs> you have it's to hand smart. it to him. You have to hand it to him. La. He's yes. playing this game like a fiddle. And I'm just saying that like, like Tian Hao is just an example. There are so many other YouTubers in Singapore. There are so many other content creators in Singapore. They are wildly successful. And I feel that instead of uh, just looking at you know, how they produce the same type of content, blah, 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 blah. Ask yourself internally why, firstly, they produce the same type of content. And secondly, why do they still get so many views? Hmm. There must be a reason. There and there must be, be something that they are doing right. Yeah. Right? And if you're able to spot what is going on, right, you will have learned a lot. 
And these are secrets that a lot of the businesses are not willing to share. If you can somehow figure it out, you will have the formula to how to, to produce an X number subscriber YouTube page. Mm. And that is not something that people can can just say I have, you know? Yeah, and the YouTuber crea- yeah. the YouTuber creators are also like uh, YouTube creators are also like kind of a slave to the algorithms and like the yeah. page la. And mm. um I mean unfortunately for me, like I am into the business of producing long form content that uh, in YouTube is pretty much voted down because it's 30 minutes long. And mm. pe- very few people will watch through the whole 30 minutes. And the way yes. they promote like YouTube videos are like first of all your the views, but second, but most importantly is the audience retention. So yes. the fact that Tian Hao can retain his vi- his YouTube like he's retained the o- the audience retention for like ten minutes throughout his entire video probably ranked him up higher la. But for people yes. like me that has like podcasts and a little bit more long form content, like my average retention rate is probably nowhere close mm. to this. And but the YouTube thing is, it's fine for it us. Up. It's fine for us purely because we are not. A business. This is not, not a yeah, full-time not a business. School. Yeah. So <laughs> it's agree. fine. Mm. Right? Whether you watch or not does not matter as much as mm. when a business needs you to watch. Yeah, because we're doing this for fun. Right? You guys cannot compare us. La. Exactly. So like like what you, what Alastair mentioned is very good because in terms of the data sets, right, we produce what a, a small audience enjoys and what we enjoy. Hmm. It's very niche. If you, if you cannot tell, we enjoy what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, we love it. But at the same time, right, mm. as a result of this being slightly different from what is popular on, let's say, YouTube trending, mm. we will never hit those numbers. And that's a fact right? that we have come to terms with and we are okay with it because it's this a is fact. a for fun thing. Correct. Yeah, and like, like people ask me like why I'm doing this. Is never I've never said to be famous or like to get X number of subscribers. It's... My, not, fact, my to, com- not necessarily to just oh it's my full time job no yeah in right. my co- my most common answer is to keep me sane and that's the honest <laughs> truth this is to keep yeah, me and, sane and, <laughs> and, 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 and we do like talking to you as an audience mm. and we do like sharing our opinions because we also like to hear what you have to say yeah no? but is this the popular audience probably not it's no not. it's not <laughs> and right? we know that I hate to say it I hate to say it mm. but uh, whoever you whoever is watching you're all pretty indie yo but Thank this is so definitely much. not the, the popular audience thank you so much for watching in fact if you want this to become popular please tell people uh, yes. we can try to put in more time and then uh, we'll try to produce more content that we enjoy and we keep yes. doing this mm. right but there is never going to be a huge paradigm shift within social media content why because People are people, ma. People is like that one. They <laughs> will enjoy popular content. Which I is have fine. so many friends who have like come up to me and say, I hate that your videos are 30 minutes long. Then I'm like, huh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. it's fine. I, I'm glad that we have a small corner of like very, very it's a very small community of you guys like here. That I have like what, 2,000 subscribers probably. And like, yes. that's such a small community, but I'm so glad that I have that, I at least have that corner. La. And, and we also like cannot appeal to everyone. Yeah, we're not trying right? to. Based, well. on, based on what Alastair mentioned, right? With 30 minutes mm. with one one complaint. Yeah. If we start to produce the shorter type of videos, suddenly they'll be like, eh, why so what, what happened? Something changed or this thing didn't <laughs> I mean we're not we're not yeah. I think we have done this enough. Like me and John are have been in the industry for enough to know that. No matter what you do, uh, people are going to have co- opinions and comments. You cannot please everyone. But at yeah. the same time, we have come to realize that within our channel, we want to make this, the content here to be as true to what we believe in as possible. And mm. also at the same time, to make things that you enjoy watching. Yes. So thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for commenting. Thank you guys for mm. liking. If you have shared my stuff, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. Yes. And... And, Hopefully yeah, you can get and bottom bigger. line for today's episode basically la, huh, is that you need to understand that yes, certain times there may be content producers that produce the same thing. But mm. I think it is the true mark of an adult or someone who is a little bit more discerning if you go and find out why. Because mm. mm. you don't realize how big of a business social media advertising is. Yeah, and there's a reason for everything. Man. It's, a lot it's of times people don't realize how big of a business it is. Mm. If you go and find out why, right? In fact, this is like an, uh, an, an an entire industry that people can go and find out more, find out a little bit more. It's like how uh I would say if you are 
before university, a majority of your friends don't know what trading stocks are. You know? Yeah. It's like things like that, but you don't realize how big it might actually be. You can actually do we'll another a video about the media industry or like things you mm. want to know about the media industry. If you guys are actually interested, I think both of us, I would like to think we have a lot of experience but we really don't, but we know enough to kind of comment a bit here and there. I feel like that for that kind of episode, we will, we can share with you a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, if you are really interested, we uh, if you if you give us a little bit more feedback, we can actually try to find an actual veteran or yeah. someone who's a who's a who's you know really experienced within the media industry, maybe someone from traditional media that has seen digital media rise, it will be perfect to That'd talk be about great. because yeah. it will be something that I want to find out more a little bit more also because I I mean as much as Alistair and I we 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 have been doing this for a while right, mm. it, we are still new. We are. We're still we don't know kids. <laughs> yeah, we're still kids. Yeah. As far as the media industry is concerned. If Tian Hao, you guys, if you want to appear on our show, please tell <laughs> send me a yeah, message. Yeah, shout out to Tian Hao, man. If y'all, if y'all want Tian Hao to come on our show and then we can talk about it, why I not? Talk please all go and DM him and ask him to reach I, out to yeah, us. Yeah, I want to talk to him. I think he's a very interesting guy. It'll be fun. So, yeah. I want to know more about him in terms of how he made I mean, people, it's very, it's very easy to see him just as the face on top of YouTube, right? But I want to know everything else that goes behind the scenes. Yes, I think that'll be interesting. And mm. yeah, I think it's a nice way to end it, right? Yep. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you are one of the 2,000 subscribers, thank you so much. And please subscribe, like, share, and comment yes. if you like it. And Th- ask Tian how to come on this show. <laughs> yes. Thank you for... Uh, giving us your attention. Thank you. I know uh, sometimes one hour, sometimes 30 minutes is quite long. Very long. What I do is I, uh, one and a half hours. Yeah. What I do is I press play then I put headphone close to minimize the window. <laughs> I, leave, I leave it up to you how you all do it. We also have Spot. We're also on Spotify so if you want, I guess you cannot go out now but if one circuit breaker ends you want to like on your transport somewhere you can just yes. put in your headphones and listen to it on Spotify. Yeah, and that, so... Thank you guys so much. Stay home, stay safe, wear masks when you go out. Um, nobody's a sovereign. We are a democratic republic. PSA, big, so, big point, big point. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys stay so safe, much. Stay safe, everyone. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.